democracy means debate and disrupting that debate is non-democratic. Debate is important in a democracy because that is what defines it. We elect people and they raise our issues in our stead and hence the name representative. Only a healthy debate culture can ensure that the voice of the people is heard and acted upon. The parliament is where the fate of 1.4 billion Indians is written in the form of laws and policies. Each year, the representatives gather here three times in a year to this effect. The current Lok Sabha, that is the 17th Lok Sabha, might be the shortest running full-time Lok Sabha since 1952 as it is estimated that it might not even be able to complete 331 sitting days. The past eight consecutive parliamentary sessions have been suspended ahead of their schedule. But what if each day goes to waste? Does it hurt the nation? Has this trend become the new arm-twisting tactic to ensure the pot keeps boiling? Hello and Namaste, I am Richa Devedi and this is The Bottom Line. Let us first look into the reasons and the rationale behind the opposition's current stalling of the parliament's proceedings. They claim people's voices are not being heard and this one is a recurring charge and that the prime minister must speak on the Manipur issue and many more such analogous charges. But if we were to look a little closely, what is the situation that we have here? The ruling party MPs have demanded a discussion on the issue in Rajya Sabha under Rule 176. But no, the opposition wants it to be held under Rule 267. The difference being the duration of the debates. 176 is a short duration discussion, while 267 is a long duration debate. This seems to now be the trend. There is an issue, the opposition bleeds and amplifies it, which it should. But instead of debating it out in the parliament, it ends up disrupting the parliamentary debate itself. This confuses, confounds, but entertains. Yes, we will surely have to credit the opposition of our country. Leaving accountability and productivity aside, they surely entertain all of us. This comes at a cost. The parliament runs on money. The money comes from the people of India. Every wasted moment of the parliament is wasting the hard-earned money of the Indian people. Every hour the parliament is disrupted, it costs us, the people, a whopping 2.5 lakh rupees per minute. That is 1.5 crores per hour, which is 150 crore rupees per 100 hours. And most important of all, it is the functioning of the parliament that ensures that policies for the benefit of the people are passed and work is done. It is a functioning parliament that ensures the representatives are able to ask questions pertinent to the running of the country and welfare of the people. Most of all, it is unjust and humiliating. It is disrespectful to the institution of democracy, the parliament and also the people of India, that is us. Let us scratch the surface a little. What do we see beneath the veneer of patriotism and concern for the people? Whatever the reason, rather the excuse for disrupting the parliament. If you stall the parliament, how does that help? And if there is unhappiness about policies, then why not debate it out in the open? Could it be hidden vested interests at play? One thing which seems clear as the day is the political advantage that would accrue to the opposition as they position themselves to be the saviors and protectors of democracy while acting exactly contradictorily at the same time. And one of the things that most and many of us see is the attention some leaders like to gain through such activities. Either they still have not gotten over from their protest days and bring the street to the parliament. Yes, the problems and issues of the street need to be brought to the parliament. But the culture of the parliament is sacrosanct. Two MPs from the Rajya Sabha have been suspended after repeated nuisance that they caused. And now they sit on a protest against injustice outside the people's house asking for their reinstatement. The 2023 budget session was disrupted protesting against the disqualification of Congress MP from Bayanard Rahul Gandhi. 
it has gone down in parliamentary history as one of the least productive of such sessions. The opposition may feel that this disruption tactic will help them electorally. But at what cost? At the cost of the people of India. The current government has been trying its best to make a push, as best as they can to run the parliament and keep it productive. They have even tried negotiating with the opposition despite their extortionary blackmailing attitude. The opposition chooses to not budge. And when the government runs the house and passes important laws, they are called undemocratic and tyrannical. Choosing to disrupt the parliament, the opposition in its desperation is nothing but hurting the people of India by harming people's real interests. It would be great if the opposition were to use the parliament for holding the government accountable rather than settling political scores and not letting things work out. Choosing to stifle parliamentary debates, the opposition is acting irresponsibly and undemocratically. It is not just choking the voice of the government, but the voice of India, the voice of its people.